we want to invest in things that are eternal. So what do we value most in this short life? Where have we placed our deepest affections and expectations? Are they focused on the temporary or the eternal? Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also, in Matthew 6, 21. Well, our continual meditations are an indicator of what we cherish the most. Many people spend a lot of their lives focusing on temporary things that perish. It could be a, a nice home or a comfortable bank account or it could be many things, earthly pleasures. All of these things demand our time, our affection, our energy, our, our money. And yet none of these things can be taken into eternity. In Hebrews 10.34, it talks about the better and enduring substance. And that's what we want to invest in, things that are eternal. Well, so what are the true riches? What can we take with us when we leave this earthly life and go into the next one? So in this short message, we are evaluating our wealth. We want to invest in things that last forever. Revelation 14 verse 13 declares that believers have works that follow them into eternity. Well, <clears throat> scripture has a lot to say about tangible and intangible treasures. Do we have the better and enduring substance or do we have a lot of substitutes? It's clear from Revelation 3 verse 18 that God desires us to be rich, but rich with the right kind of riches. He said, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich. He's talking about having divine nature and so forth. So we are exhorted not to trust in uncertain riches of this world, as Paul said in 1 Timothy 6, verse 17 and 18. So we don't want the counterfeit riches. In Luke 12, verse 16 to 21, Jesus talks about a rich man who put all of his trust in his riches. But in verse, this is Luke 12, verse 20 to 21, God said, You fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. You're going to die tonight. Then whose shall those things be that you have prepared? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. <clears throat> Jesus said, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. In Luke 12, 15. Well, let's talk about the better and enduring substance. There are two basic things that we take with us in the, into the next life. Number one is our character, what we've allowed God to do in our heart, to change our nature, our relationship with him. And then number two, what we invest in other people, our works, the holy things that we deposit in other people that have changed their lives. So we should invest in people, not things, because people are eternal and things are not. So I want to list about a dozen things that are riches that we should seek for, that we can take with us, the better and enduring substance. Well, first, let's say a good name, good character. In Proverbs 22 verse 1 it says a good name is more to be chosen than great riches more than silver and gold a good name is God's respect for us because we've pleased him 
<clears throat> he said in 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, them that honor the Lord, the Lord will honor. So that's a great treasure when we have God's favor. So the memory of the just is blessed forever. That's something we take with us into eternity, a good name, good character. So, let's talk about gold tried in the fire, divine nature. So, Revelation 3.18, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich. Gold is a symbol of divine nature. Gold tried in the fire refers to divine nature produced in us when we're in the furnace of affliction. And the scripture has much to say about this. The refining of our character. God said in Isaiah 13 verse 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Hofer. <clears throat> Let's go back to the church of Laodicea in the book of Revelation. They were very wealthy in the natural. They boasted, we are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. But God had a totally different appraisal. He said, you are poor and blind and naked. Yet God desires us to be affluent with eternal blessings saying, buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich. Revelation 3, 18. That's divine character, to have God's nature, his attributes, and to be forged into the image of Christ. So when we die and leave this world, we take into eternity who we are, our character. Character actually is the most important thing in this life, and it's formed by God's workings in our lives and by constantly choosing the right way, not the popular way. But so often great character is related to pain. When we are faced with a difficult decision or a tormenting temptation, are we going to choose the easy path or are we going to choose God's will by his grace? Character is developed when we say no to our own feelings and yes to the will of God. Our character is the sum total of all of life's choices and decisions. This is what develops our character. Well, let's talk about treasures in heaven. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. We need to send up investments for a better eternity in heaven. We could read Matthew 6, 19 and 20, and Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2, set your affection on things above. So, the Apostle Paul urges believers not to trust in uns the uncertainty of riches, but to be rich in good works, that they may lay up for themselves riches that endure forever. 1 Timothy 6, verse 17 to 19. Well, when a believer departs from this short life and arrives at his final destination. What kind of home in heaven is going to be waiting for him there? A home is actually our dwelling and we all are gonna have a mansion of our own in heaven and some are nicer than others, but it depends on our life's works here on earth. We are sending up material spiritually to build our beautiful mansion in heaven. So in Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21, Jesus was saying, invest more in your eternal home than your earthly home. 
So we, it's nice to have a nice home, but we shouldn't be over-occupied with our affections, with earthly homes and things. So we need to be rich in good works. <clears throat> Again, Revelation 14, verse 13, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Our works follow us into eternity. Now, of course, eternal life is a free gift of God. It can't be earned, but rewards are according to our deeds. And Matthew 5.19 proves this. Some are great in the kingdom of heaven, and some are the least in the kingdom of heaven. Some people who've been in heaven will tell you that even smiles or little gestures of kindness done here on earth are rewarded in heaven. They're written. Let's read Revelation 22, verse 12. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Revelation 22, 12. It was said in one woman of one woman in Acts 9 36 that she was full of good works and charitable deeds. Just think what she was laying up for herself in heaven. Other people have suffered reproach, had their possessions confiscated because of their Christian testimony. But in Paul's words, they had endured a great fight of affliction realizing that they would gain a better and enduring substance. They endured a great fight of affliction, realizing that they would gain a better and enduring substance in heaven. Hebrews 10, verse 32 to 35. Well, we want to make other people rich. Paul said, as poor, yet making many rich. In 2 Corinthians 6, verse 10. Now, the Apostle Paul had very little of this world's luxuries, yet he was able to make many rich spiritually by the truths he imparted to them that changed them for eternity. He could say of his converts, You are my crown. You are my reward. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 19 and 20. So the Apostle Paul made many people spiritually wealthy by giving them answers for the conflicts in their minds and hearts. His teaching showed them how to find peace and joy, to know the love of God that surpasses knowledge. The Apostle Paul said that he desired the excellency of the knowledge of Christ because superior knowledge produces superior character. Philippians 3, 8. So Paul spent his whole life planting the best seed of God's word in many lives and it produced very, very good fruit for all eternity. <clears throat> As the Apostle Paul invested his time and energy and teaching and prayers into the lives of his converts, they were greatly changed. The, Paul's goal was to present the church as a pure virgin to Christ at his coming. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2 and 3. And God wants to entrust a people to our care, every one of us, a people who will become part of our reward and our crown. So, remember, what we invest in people is taken into eternity because people are eternal. Things are not. Contentment is great gain. We talked about this last week. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So, a contented, happy heart is a priceless treasure also. Joy is God's gift to mankind to those who are pleasing in his sight. 
<clears throat> the joy of the Lord is our strength, we're told in Nehemiah 8.10. Joy is the fruit of being faithful to what God is calling us to do also. Well, I think in heaven some will have greater joy than others. Not that there will be any sadness. How much joy are we going to take with us in eternity? It depends on how we've lived this short life. Isaiah 45 verse 3 talks about treasures of darkness. I will give unto you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. These are special insights and truths that we gather in dark experiences of our lives. <clears throat> Certain truths can only be found in the dark. So, they are, some truths are very costly. They're very expensive, but they're very precious. So once we receive them and we can, we can share them with others and make them blessed. Remember in heaven there is no darkness. Darkness here is difficult times, but God develops special truths in us. We want to be rich with eternal things and to know him. There is even a certain treasure in Christ's reproach. We wouldn't think of that, but Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ greater treasures than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect for the recompense of the reward. Hebrews 11, 25 and 26. Moses considered the will of God more valuable than all the treasures of Egypt, even though it was difficult. Following Christ is never really popular. Christ never, never appeals to natural man or the flesh. But this man of ordinary appearance was God in disguise. Hidden within this man were all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and the blessings and mysteries of life. Read Colossians 2 verse 3. In him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. But often these are found in the dark and in difficulties. We want to be rich with the eternal blessings. And then we come to a glorious new body at the resurrection. Paul said that this earthly body is going to be dissolved and we are going to have a new body eternal in the heavens. In this body we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our, our heavenly body from heaven. So you could read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 to 8. In these verses Paul is referring to our incorruptible resurrected body. This is another great treasure to invest in. Some have a better resurrection than others. When you read 1 Corinthians 15, verse 40 to 42, he says, As one star from a diff differs from another in glory, so also is the resurrection. Some have a greater glory. It depends on how they've lived this life. We want a better resurrection and a happier eternity. Oh, this life is so short. Let's invest in the things that last forever. <clears throat> You know, not everyone is resurrected at Christ's second coming. Some are raised at the end of the millennium, a thousand years later. But we want to be in the first resurrection. If you read Revelation 20, verse 5 and 6, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. So we need to be holy and an overcomer to make the first resurrection. And we want to reign with Christ on earth for a thousand years. So there's a law that determines what degree of quickening we're going to have on resurrection morning. Philippians 3.21 He's going to change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. How? 
according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So our body will be changed to the degree Christ has been allowed to subdue all things in our life, in our heart. Every time we obey God and choose his way and die to self, something is subdued and planted in us. You know, when Christians are half-hearted, there's very little that's planted in them, in their mortal flesh. And they don't have as good a resurrection. So we don't want to settle for an inferior resurrection. We want Christ to subdue all things in us unto himself. Well, we're almost finished. We want to be rich in faith. So, in James 2, verse 5, it says, Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, but the rich in faith? Faith is another one of God's sacred treasures. Not all men have faith. It says in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 2. Even among the redeemed, every man is given a measure of faith. But we want this faith to grow, to grow. Anyone who has real faith is very wealthy. Faith brings us through dark and difficult times. Faith calms our fears. Faith brings provision and healing. <clears throat> So we want to, and in Hebrews 11, verse 3, through faith we understand. We understand the creation and everything by faith. So faith is a very valuable treasure. Uh, let's talk about being rich in patience and all the fruits of the Spirit. <clears throat> In Revelation 2, verse 9, I know your works in tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. To a church in tribulation and poverty, God declares you are rich. But to a neighboring church, the Lord said you are poor in Revelation 3, 17. Well, so the Lord himself is our exceeding reward. When you read Genesis 15, verse 1, the Lord himself is our exceeding reward. I want to close with this verse in, in Genesis 15, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. The greatest treasure of all is to have the Lord himself. When we have him in his full presence, we have everything. He is so beautiful. David said, the Lord is my portion. Paul said he wanted to win Christ. This is our whole purpose in life, to have a heart developed in us that is compatible with the Lord's and we have, and we're bringing a joy to him and we have his full presence. Let's invest in things that we can take with us. God bless you.